What's up, everybody? We are almost at six months of developing Songbringer as far as days go. That's been, of course, that's not counting weekends, so it's actually been longer than six months. It's been about, well, this is the end of the seventh, eight. It's been about eight months so far developing Songbringer. This is a Zelda like game, procedurally generated, coming out for Steam eh, early 2016. So right now I'm still working on the procedural overworld. This new overworld is looking a lot better. Let me show you a little example. Slow excellence. What's up? No, I didn't even stream yesterday. So no, you didn't miss anything. I took a day off. I didn't even code yesterday at all. I did release an update on uh, the Kickstarter though. I just I sent an update to everybody announcing finally about Retro VGS. So today I'm back into coding the overworld, procedural overworld generation and all that. And um, it's looking a lot better. So there's a little bug here on this home screen, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be fixing that today. So, but if you go, if I go, start going to like other areas, we've got this. This is a totally open area here in the center. We've got a a bottom left quadrant connected to here to there, and all of this actually matches up with the Maze version four. Well, actually, there's a newer one now, but uh, yeah, so Maze version five, you could say. So yeah, all of these paths work now. You can walk along all of this, and it's it's revealing that this is actually quite an interesting overworld. Now that now that um now that all these individual paths are here, it it's creates like a lot of intrigue. It's like wow! Oh, see, look at that. Finding this little um, refill area took some would take some doing. If you're you know if you're first exploring this overworld, you're gonna be like, how do I get to that? For example, if you're over in if you're on this screen and you get to right here, you're like, how do I get to that bottom left? Same thing with a lot of these areas. Oh, I just walked right into a cave. What's up, death? So yeah, still working on this. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah, the map gen's looking a lot better. Let me show you how it's, it actually looks pretty cool because it does it, um, it does it over time now, so I'm actually going to be working on this a little bit because there is one bug I want to fix with this. Uh, but let's let's let me show you. Let's not do it at the full slow speed, but about half the slow speed. What's up, Ethan? Welcome to the stream. So this is going to be showing the overworld animated version. And I remember I need to take a screenshot of this soon too. So it gets this, it animates it slowly, and then it also does that little, I don't know, it's almost like a little worm tracing over the whole path. This is it, and then it goes and fills in the areas. So right now I'm working on this little, last little bit where it fills in quadrants. Nice, good for you, Ethan. Okay, so what I first want to do is change this overworld scenes maze callback function and make this an actual method of the overworld scene so that this all this code right here can get put into its own function. And I think that'll help me with the whole chicken and egg problem I was having before with it. And it'll also make it so I can redraw the whole overworld if I need to. After it's animated at all, I can go redraw the whole thing. For example, if if there were a few bits that were inaccurate, I can go back over it and it'll be accurate. So let's do an update for or a, not an update, but a function that is a maze gen callback. So just call it maze gen callback. Um, and it takes int x2, int y2, those are squared, and then bits. Okay, so let's do that function about here. Just do it here. I 
and all these variables that it takes as captured arguments for the for the lambda function are actually going to become members delay per a w a h all those so all these need to become members We got float delay per, that's the delay per maze gen. We've got a color 3B, which is the color of the quadrants. We've got float area width, I think it's float. Nice, good for you, Ethan. You got the Rage game. 420 kilobytes. That's, a pl oh, that's your platformer. And then you got this one. Is this your, um, your roguelike one? Cool. Good job, Ethan. Keep going, man. Keep making games. Do what you love. Ah, cool. Those are floats. All right, so we got float, AW, AH. And the background is a layer color. Background. All right, now that all these are members, so make this a way easier. But we need to get the delay per. Here we go. Delay per. Do this bool fast equals true for now. So delay per is fast. 0 0.00. O one, otherwise slow. Yeah, of course I liked it, man. Okay, so quad color. Show quad, we're, looks like we're not using. BG. Oh, we are using show quad. Okay, so now we can go world. Said maze gen callback. Um, address of overworld scene. I think it's address of maze gen callback. That should be. Oh, uh, it's not liking that. What's the problem here? Reference to type const maze callback type dot dot dot. We got a dot dot at air. AKA const void int 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 could not bind to an R value of type void overworld scene pointer int int int. Of course it can't. Ah, uh, this needs to be either a static method. It needs to either be a static method or... Hmm. Hmm. 
tricky one here. I'm tempted to do it this way. I'm just going to try it, see if it works. So we're going to capture capture this, take the integer, take the arguments in x2 and y2 and bits and then just call overworld scene it's not equal to null pointer. Kind of janky. What are you talking about? Oh. Overall scene pointer, of course. Nice. Good for you, man. Making music too. Let's see if that worked. All right, yeah, they're super fast. Let's set the delay time a little bit down. Let's, oh, and let's also get rid of the overworld scene pointer. Cool, let's set that even slower. It'll do the slow version, turn off fast. Yeah, good, okay, this is gonna work. I think this will really be good to finally have this as a member function instead of it being a Lambda function. Um, even though it's kind of janky how it's being called. I think this might even improve it so we could get size X and size Y after the fact. Okay, so let's get rid of all this and then so okay, it creates the world. What I want to do now is get it so after it after it does all its whole animation, after all that happens it's going to go and delete every single one of the quad sprites and draw them all over again. So this is where it creates the grid. Oh hell, we could just do this not animated version to do that. Let's just do that for now. Simpler. False. Okay, not animated. What I want to do is just see if it's accurately drawing the overworld according to the th third pass. There's three passes now in the overworld. There's the pre, there's the current, and then there's the post. And so that, um, yeah, all right, cool. All I had to do is turn that off the whole time. All right, it's not going to be animated, but that's fine. Let's turn out turn out to version five now. Okay, cool. Now we're ready to actually do this level. Or I mean, do this overworld, do it better. So what I want to do is the third pass, the, the post. It's going to go and set the east facing entrances. So right now, when you look at the home screen on this overworld, it doesn't have any connection to the screen to the right of it. And I don't want that. I want every single one of these screens to have a connection to the left, to the right, 
north, south. Hmm. Okay, so I can actually do that with these. When here, when it creates the, when it opens up some walls around the start point, each one of the areas if it's not open I guess if it has both openings too. Ah, let's do not as open for now. So if it's not open, current area to the west, then we're going to do this to open it all up. We open up the bottom basically for this area and the area to the west of it. Let's see if we can do that for east too as well. Make sure this all works. So we'll set that to east. We got southeast quadrant going east. We got the northeast quadrant going east. And then the screen to the right, we've got um, southwest, northwest, both goes going west. Need to be opened or closed. Okay, so what that should do is that should make sure that every single one of the screens in a diamond shape near the home screen are all have their interiors opened up and then at least a west and an east. There we go, cool. Now the home screen's got a, a that east facing one to the bottom right. And Actually, I'm going to make this a little more accurate. So it's going to test the quadrant, the actual quadrant. So if this, not nah, this is open squared. Oh, wait. Yeah, is open x, y quadrant. This one will do x, y. The quadrant is k southwest going west. That's when it opens all this up. Now, if this one, if not quadrant, is open the southeast quadrant going east. So there now it puts the now it puts the um, the east and west openings always on the bottom and my plan for the bottom openings is to allow them to flexibly open up into top openings as well. So yes, good. We've got all that diamond shape. I think that's all all right. Actually, let's let's just force it. Let's see what happens when we force it. What's up, Alex Pita? What's up, man? Hmm. We're still getting a few areas. Oh, this is Start X. No wonder. So all these need to be X and Y. Man, I'm good. I'm doing great, man. So good. Yeah, I'm feeling feeling strong, feeling high energy, working on the game, doing what I love. Yeah, things are great. So instead of start X, this all needs to be X. All right. And then this needs to be Y. How about yourself, Alex Peta? How you doing, man? How's things? How's Italy? What's up, Nano Games? Yo. 
What's up, everybody? There. Cool. Now that should open them up a little bit better. Weapon Crowbar. What's up, man? Nice to e-meet you. All good? Good to hear. Good to hear. You're a lucky person? Why is that? Why, why are you lucky? Why are you feeling lucky today? Yeah, awesome. That's what I wanted right there. That has changed all the openings for... For these guys to be in the bottom left. So we're look I'm looking at the a diamond shape right around the home screen, which is the pink area in the in the bottom middle. All of those have openings in the bottom left and the bottom right, the, the bottom east and the bottom west that go to the areas around them. I think this luckily worked actually. Nice. Yay. That's cool. Sounds like you're attaining enlightenment. Boston Mass, what's up? Really? You can't see in the game view? That's weird. Wonder why that is. So if I run it. And I go back to OBS. It looks like it's working. Let's go straight to OBS. Does it just not work when... Uh, like, let me run it in a window. Oh, Boston Mass, I'm not changing anything. Yeah, I'm not actually changing anything while you see the game there. Um, let me just actually run the game and you'll start seeing what I'm saying, what I'm doing. Yeah, we got it clarified. Thanks for noting that though. Thank you for sharing Boston Mass. But yeah, that was intentional. This is the actual game here. I was just looking at a scene, which I changed the code and then it, it changes the actual output. So you're not actually looking at the actually how the game is. I'm, I'm actually in God mode right now, which makes me be able to run through walls and run really, really fast because I'm working on the overworld. Today I'm working on the procedural overworld generator. So when you see me working on this screen right here that you're, that you're saying, you know, it's not changing, it's because it's not. Um, that's just the scene that's showing me the overworld. So I'm running the game and it's showing me a map of the overworld. This is not intended to be something you'll actually see in the video game ever. Um, this is just something that I use as a debugging tool to be like, okay, how does this overworld look that it generated? It actually generated this based on the six letters wizard and it created this overworld. So, you know, I need to look at it and see, is this working? You know, is it actually connecting all the paths? Okay, so that looks good. It looks like it's opening up things well in the, the center. Actually, one more thing I want to do. <clears throat> one thing I noticed when I was when I went back over and looked at Zelda's overworld once again. Um, if anybody's just joined the stream, the stream. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, it is kind of confusing to look at it and go, "What the heck is going on?" I know what you mean. Um, okay, so this is the, yeah, if anybody's just trying to figure out what this is, this is actually Zelda 1's overworld. And I took a look at how, if I were to write a procedural generator, which would procedurally generate something like Zelda 1's overworld, this is kind of how I would do it. Uh, right on, yeah, there's a lot of people like that are in that time, same time zone as you, that watch really late sometimes. And, but sometimes I do do uh, earlier streams, so if you follow me here, you can actually get an email or whatever whenever I actually go live. So sometimes I go live hours earlier, sometimes I go live later. Yeah, right, Bola, exactly, right? Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry that was confusing, but it'll get clearer as, as uh, I actually start working on the overworld here. Okay, so what I was saying is this is how I would write a procedural algorithm that would generate something like Zelda 1. The red lines are what I'm talking about. So that's what I did. I finally went and did my own maze generator to kind of work like that. 
And what one thing I noticed when I went through today and looked at this again, because I've been I've been working on this procedural overworld thing for about a week now, um, and it's been a lot of work. But um, what I noticed today was that a lot of areas in Zelda One have the entire the interior entirely opened up. I actually went through and counted, and there's 69 different areas. Light right, 69. Yeah, there's actually 69 different areas that have their entire interior opened up. If you divide that by the number of actual screens, 128, that's 69 over 128, you get like a roughly 50%. What's up, Xbox Taco? It's going great. It's going great. Yeah, the maze is looking a lot better, actually. The algorithm's working great. But so, yeah, so that's that, that puts it at 50% of the screens have their interiors completely opened up, which allows a lot of open space, right? It creates a lot of openness in this this game. So I'm gonna start doing that now. I'm gonna start creating more openings. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do more openings. So once again, I'm, when I run this right now and I, sh I show you, you're not gonna really see much change if unless you really pay attention. So what I'm about to do now so I'm about to change this so that there's a lot more areas which have an entirely open interior. What that's going to do is it's actually going to make this maze a lot easier to solve in a lot of areas because a lot of areas will just be like, you know, what, what was an actual maze is now more of an actual playable game with some maze. So it basically it's just making the overworld a little bit easier. Because um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, well, for example, watch this. If I start playing... No, I'll just I'll start doing it. Anyways, let's just start coding that. So, um, let's do one little thing where when it's afterwards, after it does the entire overworld, it's gonna go through, loop over every single screen, and create random openings. It's good for you, Ethan. So we're going to loop over every screen, which is going to be Y to size Y. Y is less than size Y. And then X is 0. X is less than size 0 or size X. So let's do this before we open up the walls around the interior. Um, okay, so now I mean around the home screen. So every single one of these, we're just going to do a random roll. If this get rand, we're going to use XY. That doesn't offset the actual random number that's currently being done. So that's, just, that's basically what that's not going to do is it's not going to offset the random numbers. So it's going to generate exactly the same random world each time. Per, per its seed. <clears throat> so what that should do is create a, oh, I just did if this get ran. That opened up, okay. What that did is it opened up every single area. So you can clearly see that this maze has changed. But now I wanted to make that less than. So if get rand is less than half. I'm not sure what get ran half is, so. Let's make a get rand f. Let's make a get rand f, which works with x y. Uh, no, yeah, Alex Peter, no. Um, that this is not actually going to be the map for the game. This is just a debugging tool. So, but you can actually see where the home screen is. The home screen is the pink one. So keep an eye on that pink one, and that's where the home screen is always. All right. So we're gonna do float get rand f x y i, and we got. Auto R equals this, get rand, X, Y, I, and then we divide that, so we return R over, thanks for following, R over float, get D rand max. 
So that turns this get ran into a, a float. Hey, what's up, Arcane? Yes, I did. I did figure it out. I actually took a whole day off yesterday. And just all I did was marketing yesterday. So I did like, I just, I posted an update on um, on the Kickstarter about Retro VGS. I finally, finally announced that. Um, so yeah, I just kind of took the whole day off. I watched a movie, went and saw a friend yesterday. And it was a good day just to finally just like let, you know, my brain relax about it. Because I was kind of like, I was kind of a... Kind of a tough thing working on the maze generator so i kind of eased myself back into it today and i figured it out and now i'm working on it you can see me i'm actually just getting into actually doing some of those those things that are related to what i was working on just i did the last stream on wednesday so i didn't even stream yesterday so i'm saying um so we got post okay here we go now we can turn this into get rand f and just put that less than 50 percent right those are going to open up all those Yeah, yeah. Yep, so just that pink screen is the home. And this is not, yeah, this is not ever going to be something you see in the video game. It's just a debug tool. So what this is going to do, instead of opening up every single interior area, this is going to open up a few, like 50% of the areas will suddenly have their interiors opened up. So it'll create more of a maze, kind of like the Zelda one here. There we go. Okay, so we've got a lot of openings. I'm trying to decide if this is it's a still interesting, right? Is this still an interesting enough world? It does look like it has a few paths that are kind of maze-like. But I don't know, I kind of get the feeling this is maybe too much openness. Like this is opening up too many paths. There's really not enough maze left over at this point. So let's turn the maze, let's turn that maze down a little bit, or the number down a little bit. Nice. <laughs> what is, I forget what um, phi ratio times the phi ratio is. Oops. Ah. 0 0.381, let's do 0.381 number of screens. Okay, so now we have a few less screens that are completely open. Yeah, and so you can see we're starting to get a few more paths that are that are open oh i see it closed off one path that maybe didn't even need to be hmm so in contrast we can see if this were zero It'll look like it, it did. So this is the full-on maze right here. So that's what the maze looks like without all these forced openings. The actual loop-de-loo things you see are actually meant. Um, they're uh, deliberate maze deliberate parts of the maze that stop and then back themselves up. Right? I haven't played Five Nights at Freddy's yet. Okay, what's what's the phi ratio cubed? 0. 0.236. I have a feeling that's going to be too little.
So I don't know, that's still a lot of screens that are open. Yeah, I kind of like it about like this. I'm gonna leave the number right about there for now and get back into exploring this overworld. Yeah, I gotta play that. I heard it's good. I mean, I've heard a lot of people talk about it, so I guess I assume it's good. So, but anyways, um, yeah, let's fix the home screen now. So I'm gonna go turn off this debug overworld scene, run it again. Yeah, so here on the on the very on the home screen right here, let's actually turn off god mode now because we're, we're done pretty much with god mode for a minute we can actually play the game now for first time in a week okay so we've got this screen i need to fix this that's a bug yeah so this screen right here this this opening is meant to be here on the right and then this um this cave entrance right here is meant to be over here on the left. So that needs to get fixed. Cool, we got a store. Okay, um... Whoa, you guys are young. So young. I'm like twice as old as both of you. Actually, I'm almost three times as old as you, Nano. Wow. <laughs> Man. That's great. It's so cool to see you guys. Like, so young and, and doing kick-ass stuff. All right, so the first screen, this screen needs to be fixed. The whole swapping the sides of the, um, of the, the cave entrance. Okay, so when it creates that first home screen, I think it has to do with, yeah, it's the, it's the, the pattern for creating the home screen. It's actually a separate pattern. It's called pattern home. This creates a separate pattern for any for the tile for the tiles for the, um, the home screen than any other screen. So um, I think it's that the stairs position needs to be. What if it's what if I just swap that right there? 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 6. <laughs> nice. That's a funny way to put it. I'm 12 plus 12 plus 11. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, see if that worked. so wrong it puts it, it like it flips the okay so I'm pretty sure that's correct it needs to be that's flipped is true but I think stairs position is the thing that needs to be flipped so uh, let's do this if flipped stairs pause dot X equals stairs pause dot, or width minus Minus one. Eleven plus eleven plus eleven. Cool. <laughs> you zip lining? Yes. See what I'm talking about? Exciting stuff. Some kick-ass stuff. Zip lining's awesome. You should try bungee jumping. That's a good one. 
Okay, cool. Yay, it worked this time. But it, it covered it up with trees. It needs to make sure and not put trees. Oh, and also, it needs to switch its... Um, Side for its maze to be rocks. I want to just force force the area style to be rocks in the top left. It would be in maze in the post. So we got here. Wait, where does it? I know there's this one place where it sets the style. Pretty sure it's here. Maybe it's here. Oh yeah, it's home screen. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's not do this in pre. Let's do this in post. When it's focusing on the home screen, here we go. Set home. We wanna go set style. <laughs> nice. Nice. I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen to some people. We got flipped. We should have the flip variable still. Where did that come from? Oh, here it is. Here's the flip. Set the style. All right, let's see if that works. If this works, it, it'll create m the, the mountain or the rock tiles near the entrance. And we should be able to flip that too, so we can easily see. Yeah, that's what I meant. Rocks right here with the cave. Rocks connecting over there. We got trees over here. This should opening should work. Yay, cool. And then we got this opening over here. Cool. That's better. There's still a problem where it's creating some rocks right there. And it shouldn't. <laughs> That's right, get some momentum, bam, fly right through it. Oh yeah, okay, so we don't need that anymore, that's good. Bull flipped. Don't worry about that until we get to the post. Man, 80 pounds, wow. I also weigh twice as much as you, which is light. Right, I'm only 160 pounds. 160 pounds of 100% nerd. Yeah, dang, man. Oh, and now we're not even using the R. That's fine. We can just do DRAN zero. Keeping in sync. Uh, I don't know, Ethan, maybe it's time to get a PayPal. And do you have any money to take out? I mean, you need to do that now. You might just, you might, you could just wait until you get money and then figure it out. Okay, so the pattern for creating Let's make sure, first of all, that this is still the same world. Still all good? Yeah, okay, because I changed that random number there. I could just, a single random number can change the entire world. So you gotta be diligent in checking all that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is make sure that the rocks right here don't appear right beneath this, um, right beneath that. The, the stairs. Let's 
<laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Uh, no, I don't think, no, I don't think you need a, a credit card with PayPal. I'm not sure though. I don't know. Just check their website, Ethan. Check their website. Figure it out. You can do it. So we got area patterns. Okay. The stairs position flipped. Oh, we're already doing that right here. Hmm. First, let's make sure that I didn't break it. What's up, the ellipse? Welcome to the stream. One eighty-five. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so that did break the stairs position here. Which is super duper weird, actually, now that I think about it. The flames are still over there. Whoa. <laughs> nice, the ellipse. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, right, right? It is. It totally reminds me of AOL days, too. You got mail. I have no clue why, that's the, why that works, but... I'm just going to leave it. MSN Messenger, right? What was the one that came out? ICQ. ICQ was huge in the days when I was in college. Okay, good. There, it's at least working. I'm, I'm, I'm baffled as to why that works. But anyways, here. This needs to be X flip. Pretty sure right there. Whoops. Okay, that totally broke it. Oh, well, that explains it. If X is greater than or equal to stairs, pause, minus one, and X is less than or equal to stairs, pause, plus one. There. Now we just open it up around it. <laughs> right? <laughs> How do you keep yourself motivated to learn C++? That's a really good question, the ellipse. Really good question. Um, it depends on what motivates you. You know what I mean? What What is it that motivates you? What do you want to do? Why are you even learning C++? What is it that attracts you to it? You want to make a game? You know, that's, that's what I wanted to do when I was a kid. I wanted to make a video game. That's why I learned C. I wrote my first game in C, and then I learned C++ and made video games after that with that. But... Um, see so if you're doing it for the re for that reason, if you if you're doing it to make a video game or whatever, all you need to do is be making a cool video game. Make make what you want to make, and then you'll will be automatically motivated. You know what I mean? And in 
at the very bottom of that whole philosophy is just doing what you love. You know what I mean? It's like following your heart. Nice. See, there you go. Yeah, making a game or source engine modding. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, like I said, just do what excites you the most and you will automatically be motivated. That's my advice. And that's a good, yeah, some good advice here from Randy Brads too. Doing small projects at first, like sometimes when you get, when you dive into game development, you, you can, it's easy to get like a bit, a bit over ambitious sometimes where you're like, oh my gosh, I really want to write Doom uh, uh, from scratch. You know what I mean? So do, <laughs> I'm dating myself, right? But anyways, yeah, doing small projects can really help when you're first learning because then you get used to the game engine you want to use too. And that's really important as well. It's like it takes a long time just to get used to a game engine as well as getting used to a game programming language. So what's the difference between C and C++? C++ is object oriented. C is procedurally oriented. It means it has functions. So there's no such thing as an object in C. I don't have crappy C++ professors. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. There are always more problems than you expect. That's another good reason to stay with smaller projects at first. Welcome to the stream. I like bunnies. It's Sergeant Sam. What's up? How do you motivate yourself learning C++ when you want to make money? Just think about how much money you'll make with your C++ skills, man. How do you go from learning strings in C++ and then making a game with those when the latest thing I've learned was enums? Well, it sounds like you just need to learn strings next. So that's a, that's also a good a good reason to um, to just start with simple projects. Like right now, you're still learning about strings. You're still learning about enums. Do some simple game-related projects that are going to teach you that. For example, I would go and learn... Go do a tutorial, go find an engine you like to use, for example, first. Like in C++, you have Unreal, you have Cocos 2DX, you have other game engines like that. Um, do simple tutorials like Pong and like Breakout and you know stuff that's so easy. You're automatically going to learn strings with that. You're automatically going to learn enums. And if, you, if you're not learning that with it, do a few chapters of a, read a few chapters of a book that night as well. So, you're, so you make sure you learn it. So that's how you stay motivated. Do fun stuff, basically. Release the lurkers. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, he's a doom, right? You could, yeah, you could build up to making doom at some point. I would start a little smaller, personally, but you know, it's it all depends on where you're at. <laughs> Make a free game. <laughs> Pack it with ads. Are you talking about Sergeant Sam? How important is it to know the background stuff? It depends on what kind of programmer you are. Um, if you're a solo game programmer, you're going to definitely need to know all that stuff. How the heap works, how the stack works. If you're not learning with, if you're not learning C++, then you know it's a, it's a totally different scene. But anyways, you, I know you're learning C++. So... Um, I would say it's very important, pretty much, if you, especially if you want to make money doing it. You're going to need to be a knowledgeable C++ programmer, so Heap and Stack are very important. Very important to know the difference and what, when to use which. All right, all right, man. Lurk away. <laughs> Thanks for saying hi, lurkers. Let's see if that worked. Basically, I just changed the stair, the below the stairs pause thing to try and make it so it doesn't like. Uh... Yeah, you're welcome, Sergeant Sam. There we go. Cool. Okay, now we've got some open spots right here, right? Um, and it would probably be cool to put an open spot here too. Let's do that.
Ethan, can I help you with the art for your game? Sorry, man. I'm already too busy making the art and the programming and the music and the sounds and the business for this game. Right? Yes, exactly. What's up, Kazang? Thank you, man. Wow, you've watched every one of the YouTube videos? Dude, you need like an award. You need some kind of crazy cool award, like an achievement award that says, I watched every one of Wizard Foo's YouTube videos. <laughs> right? Yes, we haven't had a drink together yet. But, you know, keep getting to know me and eventually we probably will. I've, I've had a drink with Mars of Power, actually. Mars of Power and I met here on the stream. So, I'm sure we will at some point. If, um... You know, if, if you're ever in the Bay Area, I'm in the Bay Area, so, you know, if you're here for, like, GDC sometime or any of the other conferences, can we get together? Mars of Power was here for uh, WWDC. <laughs> Your employees? Good for you, man. What's, uh, what kind of business are you, are you running, if, you, if you're allowed to say? I think this is pretty pretty good actually. Just to leave it how it is. Why? I guess we can make this plus two. Let's see what that looks like. I know. I wish I had two monitors too. I can do all the cool stuff that other Twitch Twitchers do, where they're like they're like looking at another screen, checking their chat messages, and they got a whole screen to do whatever they want with here. Cool, startup active. Is it? Yeah, right, yeah. I know how that is. Sweet. Nice, man. Good for you. This is a super pro website you got here. I, li I love this uh, parallax. This very fit woman here. Look at all this. This is cool, man. Sweet. Pro, man. Super pro. <laughs> nice, Kazang. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, man. So let's see if that works with uh, minus two, plus two. Yeah, that's pretty good. I really wanted an opening right here around this. We still got that closed off, that's closed off. Cool. Okay, um, as an experiment, let's take this same screen here, change the world seed. <laughs> A true web programmer would, yes. But uh, I have thankfully left a lot of web programming behind to do C++ game programming. I, I was doing web programming at up to about like four or five months ago. I was still doing a little bit of web programming just to try and make some money to do this game. But yeah, thank you Kickstarter once again. Thank you Kickstarter and everybody on Kickstarter. Uh, so we want zero. I think it's zero. Mega seed. We'll set it to something else like lucky. Lucky. Right? Yeah, lucky. Um, more more glod. This is a um I'm using the Cocos 2DX game engine, but on top of that, yes, I've essentially written my own game engine that's Zelda-like, you know what I mean, and procedural. So yeah, I use Cocos 2DX. And I use Rapid Game. Rapid Game is just a tool that I wrote to um, make, make Cocos 2DX a lot faster to use. Nice, thank you, Andy Brads, thank you. Yes. Did you donate to the Kickstarter or did you donate um to the the stream.
either way, thank you so much. Like, you basically have enabled me to keep making this game full time and make it as kick ass as I possibly can. And that feels awesome. Because just a year ago, I was struggling to just even make rent. So it is freaking awesome to be able to make this game and every day just keep on making this game and not have to worry if I'm going to make rent this month, you know, and if I need to do some other work just to try and make some money and stuff like that. So here's a here's an issue. This is definitely an issue. What it did is it didn't flip. This should have been flipped to put the that over on the other side. And, and in fact, it covered up the area, the entrance. So yeah, so this this whole screen right here is messed up. So let's get that this one fixed up. Yeah, and so it was supposed to put supposed to put its opening right here. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Nice. Thank you, Andy Brads, once again. Nice. Thanks, Xbox Taco. Thank you to you all. Yeah. I'm not doing this stream just to get people to donate to this game or whatever, but I am doing this stream to get people interested in the game. So, really, that's that's my only ulterior motive. The only real thing I'm doing here is just like trying to make a game and make it public too so people can see how a game's made and learn how to do their own game or get inspired to make their own game. So it's kind of a giving process. I give to you, you give to me. It's it's a cool circle we've kind of built here. <laughs> nice, Kazane. Nice. You worked. It worked. You made me laugh. You made me laugh when you said it. You made me laugh again. Is it going to be on the Mac Store? That's a great question. I haven't thought about whether it'll be on... Because it's going to be on Steam for sure. The first release is coming out on Steam. And so I'll have a DRM-free version. I might as well put it on the Mac Store. Yeah. I'm going to have that version of the game anyway. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, Sergeant Sam, is, it's completely randomly generated. So you saw me just change the world seed there. I changed from Wizard to Lucky, and it generated a different world. <clears throat> Will I make another game? Yes, but it's going to be about six months to a year of porting this game to other platforms before I can even start on the next game. Nice. Yeah, Maxor is cool. What did I buy on the Maxor recently? I don't know. I forget what it was. I think it was a a thing that allowed me to turn my my gamepad into keys or something. Okay, so the problem with this whole algorithm is it's not generating, it's flipped. It's either not generating flipped right or... Let's set a breakpoint, let's figure it out. Okay, so flipped in this area should be false. So, because it's it's got a path... No wait, flip should be true. Flip should be true because the path is on the left. Yeah, flipped is false. Okay, let's set the word world back a bit here. Yep. Win it all, how do you learn this stuff? Um, how do you learn this stuff? It's a really good question, win it all. I get this question a lot, but I will, I will kind of try and give you my, my paragraph version of how to start game development. I'd recommend um, picking a style that you like. For, you know, first of all, start with something you know really simple and a style game that you want to make. And then start with finding a game engine that's going to help you make that game. So what you're going to want to start with maybe explore explore a bunch of different game engines. I would explore Game Maker. I would explore Unity, Unreal, um, maybe even Python, like Pygame and stuff like that. Go play, go download all those and then play with them until you find one that you're like, yes, this one is the game engine that I like. This I could see myself making a game with. 
this this one I could see myself making the game that I want to make with. And so once you've kind of settled on a game engine, then go do a bunch of tutorials with that game engine until you feel that you're accomplished with it. You could do stuff with it. You you, you know that you're that you got what you need to do to to make a game with it. And it takes a while. It takes th three to six months, I would say, to get familiar enough with a game engine that you're ready to make a game with it. And that's that's what I would do. Uh, thanks for following, by the way. Uh, Ethan, no, I did not go to school for programming. I, I did actually go to college for programming, but I made games before that. So I, I learned all from books, entirely from books. I read books on game development. I read books on programming when I was uh, in high school. <laughs> yeah, C++ the hard way. That's a good one. You can write your own game engine. Yeah. That would take a while, though. Okay, so I'm going to switch the world seed back to wizard. Because this one worked. And then I'm going to set the keep the breakpoint here and see if the flipped variable... Flip should be true. Yeah, so flipped is true. Good. So let's see what happens on the one that... So we got flipped true, which is accurate. That should be right. And then wh stairs pause. It flipped... Okay, we got stairs pause. Yeah, six, five, fifteen, and then this. Now it's fourteen. Ah, uh, okay, so that's it. The whole thing is it's all entirely wrong. All right, Andy, Brad, see you, man. Have a great night. Nah. Yeah, of course, Ethan. Yes, I agree. I agree, Morglod. Good point. Once you've learned C++, pretty much any other programming language is easy to pick up. That's because C++ is kind of like the manual. It's like, if you think of it, it's like programming languages like cars. A C++ is kind of like the manual transmission car. You've got to put in the clutch. You've got to shift your gears into the next gear. Everything's manual, right? Everything in C++ is pretty manual. I'm, 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 you're controlling what kind of byte codes are being generated pretty manually. And then other languages like C Sharp, Java, those ones are a little bit more like automatic drive cars. They're, they're like, they do things for you. They collect your memory for you and they garbage collect and do things like that. So C, it's, it's true. If you learn C++, you can pretty much master any other programming language fairly easily. Ah, my leg's cramping. Okay, so I'm gonna, I think what the problem is that it's flipping it twice. So let's set, it doesn't really matter what, what world seed. Uh, Ethan, you're gonna have to go read their website and figure that out, I don't know. Okay. So stairs pause should start off, and then if it's flipped, it should put it on the other side, and then everything else should be based on that. So let's see if that works. If I comment that out and then keep this commented in, or okay, so I'm gonna turn off the breakpoint because this should be right. Okay, so oh, so if we're open to the north, northeast, this is wrong. That's actually that. Yeah, cool.
But let's keep it let's keep it broken for a second so I can make sure the light positions are put in the right places. And I think what's going on is it's not comparing the light position to the X flip. So this should be X flip equals PX. So yeah, I think that'll fix it. And then I can go back and turn that knot back on. It should be correct once, finally correct. Man, this has kind of been one of those things that I, I got confused as to how I coded this and let it stay broken for quite a while. Good, okay, there. We've got the both the, the cave and the lights on the right side. So, and then here, if I put this knot here, I should put it back on the left side. And then I can verify that this all worked by going to the changing the world seed once again. Ah. Ah, okay. I think what needs to happen here now is it needs to open up the interior. So there's this function called pattern openings. If I set that to be not false or this is true, it means it can carve out the interior. Yeah, there we go, cool. We've got this opening here, connects correctly to that screen. We've got this on the right side, or the left side, which I mean the correct side. Let's go, um, let's make the, let's change the world seed back to lucky and see if it's it's gonna generate a completely different world, which it has the, should have the stairs on the other side this time. Yeah, cool, that works. The only problem is it didn't really generate any rocks around this. I wonder what... Oh, because it's supposed to open up the interior. Hmm. So this is racing a little bit too much. Yes! Yes, yeah, yeah. So to answer all your questions, is it absolutely free? Yes. Um, can you just write a game and then sell it? Yes. Can you write custom tools based on the engine for, for commercial usage? Yes, I'm pretty sure you can. There's, for example, they're not based on the engine, but um, it's, all, it's all based on the MIT engine, or MIT license. So MIT license is, is one of the most liberal allowing open source licenses there is. It means you can basically just do anything you want with the game engine. And yes, in fact, I, I did this. I wrote custom game engines for a while. I would take Cocos 2DX and then I would write a game, right? I would write a, a simple game like a platformer or something like that. And then I would sell the game source code for that. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, check it out. And then also check this out too. This is a good tool if you're, if you're just getting into Cocos 2DX. Check out Rapid Game because this, just watch the video here for Rapid Game and this will kind of explain what Rapid Game is and how it can save you time. If you're gonna, if you're gonna end up using Cocos 2DX, um, you should consider using Rapid Game because basically it, it makes it way faster to be able to run your games. Your games aren't actually going to be faster themselves. It's just that you're going to be able to develop faster because you it basically pre-compiles all of Coco Studio X, which is, can be like 900 different source files depending on your platform. So you want to it really helps to pre-compile those and not worry about ever compiling them again. Okay. Um, so yeah, the one thing I want to start doing here is to make it so it's open. This open center algorithm doesn't erase too much. Yeah, you're welcome, Morgan. 
So the next thing I want to do is make it so this little area right here is not ever erased. That too. So yeah, I'm going to take a quick little break. I'll be right back. Win it all. What's this game about? Good question. It's like Zelda 1. The very first Zelda. Legend of Zelda. Imagine that if it were procedurally generated. That's all this is really about. It's a procedurally generated Zelda-like game. Set in a sci-fi universe. So this is sci-fi, not fantasy. But it sort of looks like fantasy. Alright, next up, the goal is to get, take this area right here and make it so it's not, not carved out like this. So it's carved out this square area because it's thinking that it's part of the interior of this area. So this area, if you look at the map for it, it has all of its interior opened up. And so this other function goes and opens it all up. But it's actually opening it up and then erasing some of the mountains that it shouldn't. So I've got an idea of how to fix that.
Yeah, and Angelinski, that's exactly what I was just saying there. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that that's a bug, actually, that it's too rectangular. It's not supposed to be like that. So you look if you look at this world, wizard, I'm going to switch back to the wizard world, and you're going to see it's got a nice curve to the sides. In fact, this one it actually has is kind of square too. It's cutting off too many too much there. So yes, that's the next thing I'm working on is making it so it doesn't cut it off and make it too square. So the way I think to do that is to make it instead of so right now what it does is it goes and it draws this whole area. So it draws like on this screen it draws all the mountains or the rocks on the left. It draws all the trees there on the right. And then after it's gone and drawn everything, it goes and it carves out a path for the opening. So like this area right here, this little opening is carved out after it's gone and drawn the rest of the other tiles. So I think that's actually a mistake to do it that way. I, what I want to do now is create a function which simply says, is this certain tile something that will be a part of a path? So for example, this tile right here would be like X 16 y 17 or something like that and then i would have a function with set which will say is x 16 y 17 a part of the path which is open and so that way i can work it into this existing function and it'll look a lot less square so all i have to do is use this pattern openings to decide whether something is part of that path. So I think it just needs an X and Y. Let's start making this function. Let's make it um, a private. Bool. <clears throat> What's up, Gladiar? Oh, okay, so you're saying that the placement of the opening is always in the same place? Yeah, it kind of is. It kind of is, but it does change a little bit. I know it doesn't seem like it, but there actually is a random number which places the actual entrance a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Um, but yeah, I can actually, I can increase that random number. So it's, a, it's good. It's good that you shared that because now I know to, um, to make that a little bit better. How far am I with the maze? I'm actually to the point now where I'm implementing it. So yeah, the maze is pretty much done at this point. Here's what it kind of looks like. It draws this whole maze. This is how, this is how the maze generator algorithm works. It draws it, this whole maze like this. And then after it's done creating the first pass of the maze, it goes and does a post phase where it goes and opens up even more. You saw it open up a few more there near the beginning. So that's kind of how it looks. And now I'm just working on the actual code for the game of actually implementing that in the game and creating an overworld with all its tiles and all that based on that. So let's do this. If let's do a function called this is open path and it's gonna have an int x int y. Make it a const too. And then area patterns will be able to detect that. Uh, pattern quadrant, quadrant pattern openings. So let's do this. Bool area is pat is open path. All right, and now it's going to use the same, pretty much the same whole function. This is going to be a long function, actually. At least it will be to start. So yeah, we're going to need the maze. Start X, start Y, finish X, finish Y, yes. We need pretty much all this. We don't need this open tile method. This is something else.
So here's where we're going to get the quadrant and the direction. So So we're going to need a quadrant if the x is less than or equal to w2 or with shifted down one. This is going to be west quadrants. Hey, thanks for following. So we got Q equals either northwest or southwest. So that's if height is less than, I mean, if uh, Y is less than height shifted down one, then we got, that's going to be K southwest. And this one is going to be K northwest. So it's just determining the quadrant based on the position. So this is else, and this is x, y, let's do greater than or equal to here as well. So q equals greater than or equal to height, shift down one. This one's going to be north, or I mean, um, yeah, southeast, northeast. There, so we've determined the quadrant. We also need to determine the direction. Ooh, man, that's a tricky one because we need a loop over. Shoot. Hmm. So actually it would help to have all these W2, H2s and all that. Let's put these at W2, H2. All right, and we can subdivide all this as well. So we got, so direction, D. D, if, we, if we're in the southwest or northwest west quadrants I'm actually going to separate this out as well. So if y is less than or equal to h2, then the q equals k southwest. And the d, this is where we set up the direction. Um, I'm thinking if y is less than or equal to h4, then that is k south. Otherwise, K West. Man, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really liking this code that much. I think this could be, probably be written better. Q equals K Northwest. All right, so now this is the east side of the screen.
This is northeast. This one's west. That was a mistake. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, this could be done better. I know this could be done better. But I think this will do to get this algorithm started. So we don't need to look, loop over each quadrant anymore. We don't need to loop over each direction anymore. Don't need to create openings. Let's just start here at the beginning. Okay, so we're checking if the if the path is open at this point. If we're not even open in the quadrant, in the direction, we're going to return false immediately. Otherwise, we're going to check if this particular tile falls on a path that is open. So we need to create an offset. All of this can be done afterwards All right, so this, this function is going to end like this. Return x is greater than or equal to start x. x less than or equal to start or finish x. y is less than or greater than or equal to start y. And y is less than finish y. There. We've got this function created. Let's see if it works. So what I'll do is I'll now instead of instead of opening up the interior, instead of instead of carving out paths, the pattern home is actually going to use this new function to determine if it should place tiles rather than retroactively going and clearing tiles. So it's, I'm commenting out pattern openings and then. If this is open path, man, that took forever. X, Y, we'll just continue. Okay, so if this works, then we'll have a, a nice, clear, open path to the north, to the west, to the east. All right, looks like it, it it looks like it might have worked there in the top right, but it did fail here on the sides. Hmm. So we're trapped in. Let's turn back on god mode and see what happened to the around this screen. I'm wondering especially right here yeah, it looks like this is where the path should be. And it looks like it did open up these particular tiles right here. 
but it didn't open up this. This right here. And I think it has to do with how this function, this new function right here, this whole part here that I'm worried about, this bit, this is just not that accurate. Because it needs to divide up every single position on the whole screen needs to be di divided up into 16 different actual individual things. There's four different quadrants, there's four different directions per quadrant. So I need, just need to accurately determine which quadrant and direction So I'm going to try and fix this for maybe five or ten more minutes, but then I'm going to be done with my stream because I'm getting close to my limit for how much I can do in one session. So um, let's see. Uh, let's rethink this. Let's rethink this whole south. South. We're starting with southwest. So we got x is less than or equal to w2. That's put you in the west. Yeah. Y is less than or equal to H2. Okay, I have no doubt that the quadrants are all correct. These are good. The thing is the direction can be four different directions per quadrant. So there's no, yeah, so basically you just need to, we need to go like if, um, I guess if y is less than or equal to h4, no, 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 no. I'm thinking actually that it should be divided into thirds. So like a quadrant, if you think of it, let me just draw this. I'm gonna draw what, I, draw what I'm thinking. This will probably help. So here is the whole, let's say this is the whole screen. No, let's do, let's do a screen better than this screen. Let's do the actual resolution. So 420, 240. Okay, so here's the middle. Here's the quadrants of the screen. And then each one of these is developed, is separate. So I think you could develop, put these into thirds, right? And then thirds. Okay, and then this is this is west, of course. This is east. This is north. This is south. The question is if if, if a tile is right here in the middle, what the heck is it?
Oh, I got it. 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 Okay, this is cool. So we'll do it like this. Am I still streaming? What's up? I haven't heard from you guys in a minute. Looks like I'm okay. <clears throat> Alright, so if I divide it into like a diamond shaped quadrant, right? Yeah, that's it. So this is north, this is south, this is west, and this is east. Yeah, that'll do it nicely. That's way more accurate. Thanks for following. Okay, so yeah, the only thing I could do now is just turn that into code. So the equation for a line is something plus something is less than another thing. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it a quits for the stream today for right now because I just need a moment. I'm going to think about how to draw these lines. So basically all I need to do is convert this into code for this function right here. So I need to basically determine the right quadrant. I've got that done. Quadrant's done. That's easy. This is, you know, northwest, southwest, northeast, southeast. That's easy. And then this bit right here, I just need to convert into some code. So... I'll finish this later on tonight because my brain's a bit tired. I've been streaming for a while and I know I need to do a couple different line equations, but those are kind of like escaping my brain right now. So I'll figure this out later tonight. And what that'll allow me to do is inside this function here, or yeah, inside the pattern home, I'll be able to have openings in the right places without having to carve them out after the fact so it'll make this screen work again so basically what will happen is like right here in the bottom right there will be an opening and over here there will be an opening and over here this will be cl clear perfectly open going up this way to connect to this screen so yeah that's it for this stream lighter thief what's up hey welcome to stream i'm just about to finish though I hope you're doing good though, man. I hope things are going good with your game too. So, yep. That's it for today's stream. I'll be back tomorrow though. Same time, 4 p.m. ish Pacific time. That's usually when I'm on.